Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to you. You're watching another episode of Encounter. We have a very special guest uh, with us uh, today. We have worshipful brother Graham Mackenzie, who is the assistant district grandmaster of the district grand lodge of South Africa North. He's also in Mauritius for the tercentenary celebrations of the United Grand Lodge of England. Graham, thank you very much for being with us. Roshan, it's a pleasure to be here. Of course, we'll be speaking uh, about uh, Freemasonry, and thank you very much uh, for coming forward and, talk and talking freely about it. So, uh, my very first question, there's a lot of grey areas about uh, Freemasonry in Mauritius or even around the world, and people think it's uh, very secretive, there's a lot of taboo, there's a lot of satanic acts about it. So, just give us an overview of, uh, just a general overview of what it is. Well, perhaps let me start by saying that the first, sort of the, the three principles on which Freemasonry is, is founded is brotherly love, relief, and truth. And, and in modern day language, that would really translate to uh, integrity, uh, tolerance, loving thy neighbor, um, and, and charitable work, really. So, I mean, so Freemasons uh, bring together a collection of, of like minded individuals from all different denominations and religions and classes of society and and principally try and make good men better that's one of the overarching principles of freemasonry is just to try and improve man to be, be a better person and be nicer to the people that are around him uh, can i ask how long have you been a freemason so I've been a Freemason since 1990, so approaching uh, 27, years. 27 years now. Yeah. So what has been the difference in your life? I think it's, it's really working to a, uh, a belief system um, that encourages you to think about what you're doing and how you interact with your, with your, with your fellow man, um, to be tolerant. And, and the fact that you do that in a group or in a lodge with other people who have the same principles and thought processes makes it easier for you to go and do it as part of a group um, as opposed to perhaps having that belief system and trying to do it on your own. So basically it's trying to be a better human being all while being part of a group and uh, all those people within the lodge all have the same uh, objectives? They all have the same objectives, and, and, regardless, and, and regardless of your religious persuasion um, or your political persuasion or your standing in society, you have groups of people that all share the same, the same principles of, of brotherly love, relief and truth. And that makes a, a big difference because you've got a, a group of people that are all working to the, to the same objective, and that gets realised uh, in some of the, the charitable work that, uh, that Freemasons do, which in many provinces and districts around the world is, is often undersold. Um, I can tell you that, for example, in the United Kingdom last year, um, Freemasonry raised over £33 million for charity, non-Masonic charities. Um, and in South Africa, in our, in our small district in South Africa, um, over the last 20 years, we've raised over 25 million rand, or probably close on 65 million rupees. Mauritian rupees, um, that's also been donated to, to charitable uh, institutions around the district. Charity seems to be a larger segment of uh, your values. Uh, in, in a few words, can you please tell us one, a few of uh, the main uh, charitable causes that you have supported? So we've supported many charitable, um, charitable causes. Um, we, we have a very rigorous process around how we select which, which um, institutions are going to, be, are going to receive uh, the money that we, that we donate. We want our money to make a difference. And so we don't necessarily tend to support the biggest charities because in some cases, that money doesn't make a, a, a big difference to that charity. So we tend to focus more on local and regional. They may be homes for the elderly, uh, for the infirm, 
uh, people that have suffered uh, head injuries, for example, in motor accidents. Current issues. Very current issues. Um, and we have a, a, a group uh, that, uh, that reports into the executive on which I sit called the Board of Benevolence, and that effectively does a due diligence on all of the institutions that we may consider that could be beneficiaries uh, of our charitable donations. And every year we typically give somewhere in the region of about uh, a million rand, or say two and a half That's million Mauritian rupees, um, to one of either two or three uh, locally based institutions where our money will make a difference and where we can police it. We can see how it's being applied and we can see the difference that it makes to people's lives and, th and that's important for us. All right, let's put the financial aspect aside for, for, for a few seconds. Uh, uh, I'm very curious as to, to know as to how did the Freemasonry begin? Uh, how did the values come together? Uh, how many years has it been around? J tell us a bit about the history of Freemasonry. Okay, well the ancient history of Freemasonry is, 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 is somewhat clouded and if you ask 50 different Freemasons you'll probably get 50 different answers as to where Freemasonry actually genuinely originated Origin from. Well. I think it's safe to say that the origins of Freemasonry go back several thousand years. Um, what we are celebrating uh, this year is the tercentenary, is the 300 year anniversary of the United Grand Lodge of England. Now, that originated itself in 1717 when four lodges in London uh, formed themselves together to form the first Grand Lodge. From there, in the UK and throughout the rest of the world, organised Freemasonry has sort of emanated from, uh, from that original point. Um, and Freemasonry now boasts probably a membership worldwide of certainly over six million people. And um, again, I, I will ask you, uh, are the values that were applicable in 1717 and now in 2017, are they, this, are they this still the same values? Is, is, is it still relevant? It's very relevant. Um, one of the reasons that the four lodges got together was to create a body of like-minded people. So 300 years ago in the UK, you had the Protestants and the Catholics that were fighting each other and had fought each other for hundreds of years. And one of the principles of the foundation of those the four lodges was to cross that divide, was to create bodies of people that put aside their political persuasions um, to be able to work to the common good. And I would argue, actually, that those same principles apply equally today, probably more so now, um, given the conflict that goes on in the world um, from a political and a religious sort of persuasion. Freemasonry and its principles today are probably more relevant share than, they were, than they were 300 years would ago. Would you please share some of the principles? Well, so this comes back to what we were saying earlier. So yeah. Honesty, yep. integrity, loving your neighbour, uh, tolerance, and, and, and really just working and, and just accepting people for who they are in a classless uh, environment. And regardless of your background, your social status, what colour you are, what religious persuasion you are, you can come together and meet, enjoy each other's company, um, work one of these series of allegoric plays which is what Freemasonry is, is all about and afterwards have some fun and you know enjoy the company of your brethren your brothers in the lodge but after the lodge meeting enjoy the company of their wives and their families and and and, and just socialize and, and basically spend time with people who share the same values absolutely yes so these values they they, they come with a new uh, I guess after some time after some uh, uh, training? Uh, well, I think, so, if, if somebody wants to join English Freemasonry... I was about to ask, yeah. So, I mean, there is a process, and, and that process typically starts in most lodges with an interview with the sort of the, the management team, if you like, of, of the local lodge. Because it's important that the culture of that lodge um, is given to the, to the candidate. The candidate knows the type of people 
that he's going to be associating with. So you so, have a criteria. So well, the first criteria is to believe in a in a in a superior into into a superior being. You don't not necessarily a specific god. I, I want to dispel the myth that Freemasonry is a is a religion. Okay, right. Freemasonry is is not a religion. It's not a substitute for religion. There is no salvation in joining uh, in joining Freemasonry. Um, but what it but what it does do, it, it makes you, it, it first of all asks you the, the fundamental question, do you believe that there is something greater than man? And if your answer to that is in the affirmative, then you, you effectively, subject to your, um, your history, um, uh, and, and whether, for example, you may or may not have a criminal record, etc., 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 whether you would be eligible to join. And it's as important for the candidate to understand the people that are in the lodge that he may join, because if you're 30 years old and you're joining a lodge that's full of 65-year-old men, you're probably not going to have the same kind of affiliation with those people that you would have if you were joining a lodge that's full of 40-year-old men that share the same cultural interests with you, perhaps, or sporting interests, um, and therefore your, your integration into, into Freemasonry can be that much more enjoyable because outside of the Lodge you can enjoy the company of those people much more because you've got more in common. There, there are many, um, if I may say, different uh, kinds of uh, Freemasonry. There's, uh, I mean, I've read there's uh, the Scottish, English, Egypt, France, America. So, so why so many different? Why, why, why not a common one? It's a good question, and I think it's as a, an issue of, of, of culture um, as much as anything else. And when an institution is the size that Freemasonry is, over time it evolves and splinters and, and changes its kind of composition. So the, and the rituals that, or the allegoric plays, if you like, that, are, that, are, that take part in a, in, in a lodge room um, have also changed over time depending on the, 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 the politics, uh, the religion um, and the leadership of those I in those areas to, to make sure that it doesn't become offensive um, to, to, to anybody that, that may be looking to join. So, so it, it, ch it has changed over time, and, and English Freemasonry, for example, has changed quite significantly in terms of the, the content of what goes on in a lodge um, in the last 150 years, 200 years or so, um, to reflect a, a changing environment. And, and, and environments change at different paces in different geographies around the world, and therefore you have this sort of uh, scenario where different Grand Lodges oversee their own, uh, their own group of people. So, for example, in South Africa, uh, you have English Freemasonry, uh, you have Scottish Freemasonry, Irish Freemasonry, Netherlandic Freemasonry, and you have what's effectively Afrikaans Freemasonry, the Grand Lodge of South Africa. So, you, there, there, are, there are a number of different, all with the same principles, um, slightly different ceremonies, um, and, and possibly a slightly different culture within, within, uh, within those different lodges. So it's important that you find culturally the right fit for you. Uh, you mentioned about uh, rituals. Um, some people call it uh, satanic practices. Uh, would you mind sharing a bit more about uh, the rituals that are carried out, if sure. possible? So the, the, the process... The, the, the process and coming back to one of the principles of Freemasonry is, is to make you a better man. And we do that through a series of effectively three different allegoric plays. Freemasonry, regardless of which constitution you may be a member of, is founded around the principle of the building and the completion of King Solomon's Temple a thousand years BC. Now, um, you, you join a lodge, you go through the process of application, you join the lodge as what we would call an entered apprentice. Uh, you're, figuratively speaking, rough, um, you know, and you 
you are open to making yourself better and refining yourself and making yourself a better man and using a series of allegoric plays um, the members of the lodge will, will take you through a um, take you through this play and, and, and teach you to apply certain principles um, around guided by um, typically uh, Mason's tools so compasses squares levels for example using those tools in a in a in a figurative sense to to make yourself so more you, upright you in use society. those tools to to complete rituals we use those tools to to give an explanation of how man should really be so for example you know a plum rule for example is is a, is an upright mason's implement and we're saying as as a man you should be upright you know you should be you should be level you know you should you should f follow your you know your life around certain guided principles which is what freemasons or masons tools are all about a compass defines a a a, a certain area a a square gives you an, an angle which is you know you can use that as a as a as a solid building block for for you as a man and and that may sound difficult to kind of comprehend but using the building of a temple uh king solomon's temple a thousand years bc you go through this series of of plays so you join your 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 new um you take so you you join and, and you become uh, what they call an entered apprentice you take your first step or your first degree in freemasonry you then take your second step you become a fellow craft which means you're more proficient in the skill of uh, figuratively masonic workmanship and, and becoming a better person and then you take a third step which is the completion of that first part of freemasonry which says I, I kind of I know where I am now and, and, and your, your rank within or your position within the lodge um, is signified by some of the sort of the infamous aprons which uh, masons are, are are known to wear. So so your apron will will give uh, will indicate to uh, other brethren around the world your your seniority in the area to which you to which you uh, to which you reside and to and to where you go to lodge. Are, are lodges um, gender specific? Um, English Freemasonry is gender specific. English Freemasonry is for men. Um, there are plenty of uh, female uh, ladies uh, Freemasonry uh, institutions around the world. There are uh, several in South Africa. I know there are several in Mauritius. Um, so it's not a, uh, again, it's, it's, it's a question that's often raised um, up to now. Um, we've taken a view that it's, it's a society for men with a ritual designed for men um, and we are practicing we are practicing that ritual we have absolute harmony with uh, lady Freemasons um, in certainly in South Africa um, there's no we don't hide from each other um, it's just that they practice their Freemasonry as ladies we practice our Freemasonry as guys Please tell us, why are you in Mauritius uh, this time around? Okay, so um, principally for two reasons. One is to uh, assist the three uh, English lodges in Mauritius um, to promote the tercentenary, the 300 years of, of English Freemasonry. And the second reason that I'm here as well is that each of the three English lodges on the island have their uh, annual meeting call it an installation meeting where the new master or the new president of the lodge is uh, is, 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 is given the honor of uh, presiding over the lodge for the next uh, for the next 12 months um, and there is a, a process that needs to be followed by the lodge um, that's clearly set down and, and part of my duty uh, and and the team that are here with me uh, in Mauritius from uh, from South Africa is just to make sure that that runs 
to the book? For someone who's not a Freemason, what would you tell to them? Find out more. Um, I'm not going to say that Freemasonry is for everybody. It's not. Um, but find out more. Freemasonry and, and, and all about Freemasonry is, is now readily available. You can, you know, you can Google. Uh, so from, from the internet, you know, the, in days gone by where it was hard to acquire information about Freemasonry. You, you've, co you've come out of the shadows quite a lot in the last 10, 15 years. We've come out significantly and I think we recognize, we recognize two things. One is that in today's media-based society, one has to be open. So, for example, the United Grand Lodge of England it, it, it is on Twitter. There's Facebook accounts. The lodges have Facebook accounts. They're on Twitter. They're on Instagram. The whole the social media has been embraced by Freemasonry, as well as a recognition that unless you open yourself up and tell people what it's all about, people aren't going to join. And, or, or people are going to pass the opportunity over to join. So it's incumbent on us to promote Freemasonry, almost to sell Freemasonry, to say to people, this is what it's about. You may not like it, and that's okay. Um, you may not like the football team that I support. It doesn't stop you, you know, it doesn't stop us being friends. You may not like Freemasonry, but you may like Freemasonry. And what we found is that where we've had, for example, open days within the district in the last uh, few months, we've received a number of requests from people that have come into a lodge, asked some questions, received some information, and then applied to join. It's just about giving information to, to the people that, that, that are, are looking for it. Proper information, really about what Freemasonry is all about, and not some of the, the myths that are is sort of propagated sort of in society today. Uh, is there an age limit to, to become a Freemason? Freemasonry is open to anybody, any man of any age that wants to join Freemasonry can find a local lodge, um, put himself up for interview, and if he's successful in the interview, he can join Freemasonry, whether he's 21 or 71. Do Freemasons influence and lobby on governments? Um, no. Um, Freemasons uh, don't, uh, uh, certainly English Freemasonry has never publicly lobbied, uh, lobbied governments to, to push any uh, political or other agenda. Um, it's true to say that there are some very influential um, people in Masonic society um, but as an institution itself, uh, Freemasonry is a, is a, is a non-political uh, organisation and it's very clear about that. Um, politics is, is one of the subjects which is um, suggested that you, you do not, you know, you don't talk politics because politics can be a divisive subject. When you look around you see many buildings bearing logos of, of uh, Freemasonry and uh, you have to ask the question then uh, when you in in England in the States even in France how how come uh, they have been behind the construction of so many influential buildings and also behind so many influential politicians I think probably in terms of influence I mean Freemasonry has had over the last 300 years many politically influential people and I think what we need to do is we need to distinguish between politically influential people and the institution itself campaigning for, you know, to, to promote a certain agenda. Um, so in the UK, um, many senior politicians over the last 300 years, many members of the royal family uh, over the last 300 years have been members of the uh, English constitution. Um, and I'm sure that would uh, have assisted at certain times for buildings to have been developed and, and so on in, in, in certain locations. But in terms of pursuing a political agenda, that's, that's never happened. And in fact, one of the things that we, we talk about when we, when we look at the buildings, I mean, probably uh, 
in the United States, and, and I can't talk for, for American Freemasons, but George Washington was a Freemason. Um, Washington, D.C., you can see the Masonic symbolism in the way that, that uh, Washington, D.C. Is, is, is actually built. You, you, you can, from a helicopter, you can see how the Masonic symbols kind of knit together. So I wouldn't pretend that it's never happened, but um, I, would, I would strongly sort of counter the suggestion that as, a, as an institution, Freemasonry has uh, sought to uh, influence government to pursue an agenda um, of, if, if, of anything of a, of a political or religious nature. Thank you very much uh, for being with us in the studio. We have now come to the end of this episode of Encounter. Stay tuned and catch the next episode. <laughs>